We got the steering knuckle all cleaned up with our ball joints installed. I used to have that light shining on my work. Now we're going to slide it into position and put the lower nut on finger tight. Then we'll tighten that up and torque it through the to the torque spec listed on the instructions in your ball joint. Make sure you put both rubber boots on firmly and straighten them up. Put a little never seize on the thread and the taper so it sucks it up good. Got our lower ball joint torqued first. Steering knuckle is on. You got to put a little tension with the big nut on the upper one without the sleeve in in order to hold this because this has got a locking nut on it. It doesn't have lock tight on it. Torque this. Once you get this nut all the way up tight, this one will still be loose. You torque this. Hand me the old sleeve. See the old sleeve there? There's a sleeve there with threads on it. Torque this bottom one to 70 on this application. Once you get it torqued, I put a little never seize, seize on the sleeve, and a uh, little never seize inside. It screws into here. You torque it to 70. Then I put a little never seize on the nut. You torque the big nut to 110, or 100, excuse me, 100 foot pounds on this application. Make sure you read your directions. They'll have the torque specs in the box with a good quality ball joint. You torque it to, I torqued it to 100 pounds. And then it said, line up your cotter pin. If it's not lined up, continue to tighten. I used the long handle ratchet and the extension bar. Continue to tighten until you get your cotter pin in. Do not back it off below 100 pounds. Torque your 100 pounds. Continue to turn till you get your cotter pin in. If your cotter pin will go at 100 pounds, you're fine. If not, continue to turn to the right, tightening till your cotter pin will slip in. Slip it in. Cotter pin's in. Bend it over. It's gonna. It's ready to go. This little sleeve, you'll get a new one. It fits in here in the upper uh, part of the axle, built right into the axle. Okay. So next. We're going to clean the bore up. And what are you using to do that? I've got some about 80 grit emery cloth. I'm going to clean the, some of the rust out of that spindle bore. The spindle fits in there. If you remember right, it was quite quite tough to get apart. I did end up having to use a chisel, but I've got a, a chisel that's just right for this. And I went down both sides carefully. Don't chisel your little studs that hold this on. And then we had to touch this up with a little sandpaper because I left a couple chisel marks. And when you got a flat surface for your spindle to mount up here in a minute. Next thing we're going to do as soon as I get this shine up is we're going to slip the drive axle back in the housing. You want to be real careful. There's a sealing surface here. You want to clean it up. Mine had a little mark on it. I used 400 sandpaper. The mark is it's still visible, but it doesn't catch on your finger. I'll put a little grease on the splines, and just the tiniest little bit of lubrication around that seal sealing surface. Slide it in carefully so you don't uh, drag dirt up and damage the lip of the seal that's on the outer edge of the differential there. And we'll uh, pick that up in a few minutes and put that in. As soon as we get some lubrication on it. Okay, we slid our axle in, cleaned up the sealing surface. It's got a seal inside the differential. Carefully slid it in, not to drag dirt in there. Put a little grease on it. Put our new rubber seal here, nylon washer, and tiny seal here that fits in the back here. Greased up our bearing good here by hand, and uh, we're ready to slide it all together. I need a little more grease.
So I have it up on my bearing. I like to have plenty of grease in there for that seal to run on. That bearing to run. That'll, that only runs when it's in four wheel drive or when the hubs are locked in. But we need plenty of grease on. Carefully slide this on. Put some never seize around the flange so it won't rust tight again. We need to service it again. We won't have to use a chisel and beat it to, beat it to death. Slide that on, and we'll clean up the backing plate. Put a little anti seize on each stud and bolt that up. We're uh, put our bolted our swin spindle back in. We cleaned the, some of the crud off the disc brake. Uh, plate here, or caliber mount. Clean some of the crud out of there. Put some, never sees on our six little studs, and uh, tighten them up. There's a torque setting on them, and uh, we're ready to uh, repack our wheel bearings and put them uh, in the hub. Put our wheel seal in, and then put that together. We're back at the shop and we're uh, wiping out the grease out of the hub and the wheel bearings here with a clean rag. Okay, now turn it back over and clean up that other part we got there. We're cleaning out the, the wheel bearing race and the seal bore, so we're going to put repack the bearings here in a minute. They're down here in the tub. We're going to rinse them off with some solvent and then run them through a lacquer thinner bath to get all residue off of them and then pack them with some new high temp disc brake grease. Got a quick booby shot. Okay, back to work. We're going to brush. Not an oil brush, a clean brush. We're going to brush. We're going to clean these wheel bearings up here in a second and we'll show you how we can do that. Pour a little solvent in there and clean them up over here on the workbench. We've uh, taken some odorless mineral, mineral spirits, washed our bearings thoroughly with a stiff brush, got in down all the grooves in our wheel bearing. They're kind of a mess, so we're going to drop them in our little our little bucket of uh, our super clean bucket of. Lacquer thinner because we don't have a access to any kind of a parts washing deal. That will get the rest of our grease out. That one's got a little crud left in it. This really works pretty good at this. All you got like we do, we don't have a big bunch of tools in the shop. It'll float the last little blobs of grease out. We'll let them drip dry for a second. Then we're going to get our uh, air nozzle and just gently dry them off and then repack them with grease. 